When we're multiplying and dividing rational expressions, the rules are the same for when we're multiplying just regular fractions. We don't divide, we multiply by the reciprocal. Like we saw with the reducing, we're going to have to factor expressions when necessary, and of course we have to simplify. Now once again, we can't cross-cancel, we can't reduce things that are connected by addition and subtraction, only multiplication and division. So in this first round of questions, there's no addition or subtraction, so at least that won't be a concern. Now, my suggestion, as opposed to just jumping in and starting to reduce right away, is to do a little simplifying on these styles of questions first. Meaning, I'm going to combine these two fractions into one, since everything is being multiplied, and I'm going to gather the variables that are the same in the two fractions. So in the top, there's not really anything that's going to happen other than combining the 20 and the a cubed and the b. But in the denominator, I do have the 10 here, so I'll have a 10 on the bottom. And then I have this a squared along with this a that are multiplying each other. These fractions are multiplying. So when I have a squared times a to the first, I'm just going to add those exponents. So those are going to combine to make a to the third. And then, of course, we still have the b squared on the bottom. So this way, I won't lose track of any stray a's or other variables that are around in the problem by combining them this way. We'll see the same thing in the second example in a moment. But now that I have everything gathered, I'm ready to start doing my reducing. So like we did with the problems that weren't multiplication of two fractions, but instead were just reducing uh, fractions, we're going to start with the numbers. So 10 divides into itself once and into 20 twice. So I'm ending up with a 2 on the top. I've got a cubed on the top and the bottom. So those are identical. So those are going to cancel each other out. And then I have a b to the first on the top and a b to the second on the bottom. So we're going to use our rules of exponents, subtract those exponents. So I'm just going to end up with a single b on the bottom. And so on the top, I've got 2 and then everything else is gone, and we just have a single b left on the bottom. For the second example, I've got division instead of multiplication. So like was mentioned earlier, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to end up flipping that second fraction. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So we've got 48 x to the fifth y to the third over y to the fourth. So I'm not doing any reducing or anything like that yet. And then I'm going to multiply that times the reciprocal. So I'm going to flip this second fraction. 6x cubed y squared over x squared y. And so now we're going to do the same sort of thing that we did on the previous question where I'm going to combine the variables in the top and combine the variables in the bottom instead of starting my reducing right away. The other thing I have on this one is I have a 48 and a 6 on the top here, so I'm going to need to multiply those. If I had a number in the denominator, I would uh, hold off on multiplying those and see if there's any reducing I could do to make me work with smaller numbers, but in this case, I just need to multiply. So if we use a calculator, 48 times 6 is going to be 288. Then I'm going to combine the exponents on the x's, so I've got x to the fifth, and x to the third, those I add the exponents, so I'm going to end up with x to the eighth, and then I've got y to the third and y to the second on the top, so those are going to combine to make y to the fifth. And then doing the same thing on the bottom, I have this x squared, I'm just going to go in alphabetical order, so I have an x squared on the bottom, and then again, I've got y to the fourth and then this y to the first, so if I combine those, I get y to the fifth. Now that I have the variables combined in the top and combined in the bottom, I have everything grouped together that makes it less likely that I'm going to lose track of something as I start my reducing. So with the numbers, there's nothing I can do with that 288. That's going to stay put. With the x's, I'm going to subtract the exponents. So the x squared here goes, and I'm left with six of them in the top. And then with the y's, we have the same exponent, y to the fifth on the top, y to the fifth on the bottom, so those are going to cancel each other out. So our final result here is 288x to the sixth. Don't lose track of that six exponent that we ended up with there. So here we have examples that are going to require factoring before we start our reducing. 
So we'll start by factoring the numerator in this first fraction. So I can undistribute an x, so I'm going to do that. And so left behind is going to be x minus 4. In the denominator of this first fraction, there's nothing I can do. I'm just going to leave it as x minus 1. But I do have to remember that those come together as a package. It might almost help to put them in a set of parentheses so I remember, so I don't get baited into potentially reducing the x in the top and the x that's connected to the minus 1 on the bottom. And then I have to do the same thing over here. So I've got to factor this numerator. So this one I'm going to break up into two sets of parentheses with x as the first piece. I need to multiply to make a negative, multiply to make negative 4, so I need one positive and one negative. And so now I need to find two numbers that multiply to make 4, but add to make 3. They have a difference of 3. So those two numbers are going to be positive 4 and negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and then 4x minus 1x will give us the 3x that we want. And so then finally, I have the 2x on the bottom that I can't do anything with. So now that everything is connected by multiplication, up in the top, that's the x times x minus 4 times x plus 1, or plus 4 times x minus 1, and then the same thing on the bottom, x minus 1 times 2x. So now I need to see what I can reduce. So jumping out, I can see that there's an x minus 1 in common in the top and the bottom. And then I can also see that this x and this x will be able to reduce as well. So even though it's connected to the 2, it's by multiplication, so we're allowed to reduce that. And then beyond that, there isn't really anything else. We might be tempted to reduce the 2 on the bottom with the 4 that's in the parentheses with either the x minus 4 or x plus 4. But remember, we can't connect, uh, reduce things connected by addition and subtraction. So our final result on the top, we can write x minus 4 times x plus 4 all over 2. And if we want, we can FOIL the top so that would end up, since it's a difference of squares pattern, x squared minus 16 all over 2 would be just fine as well. The next example is division. So we're going to have to first change this to multiplication by the reciprocal. And we always have to flip the second fraction. So the first one's going to stay put, x minus 2 over x squared plus 5x. And then I'm going to make it times and then I'm going to flip this second fraction, x squared minus 25 over 2x minus x squared. So now we're ready to start our factoring. So in the first expression, the x minus 2 on the top, we can't do anything with that. But on the bottom here, hopefully we see we can undistribute an x. So I'll take that out, and that leaves me with x plus 5. So now I need to factor the second fraction. Up in the numerator here, We've got x squared minus 25, our difference of squares pattern. So I'm going to factor that into x plus 5 times x minus 5. And then on the bottom, I'm again going to do some undistributing. I can see that there's an x in common there. So I'm going to write that as x times, and then left behind inside the parentheses, it's going to be 2 minus x. x times 2 will get me back to 2x x times negative x will give me the negative x squared. So now I can start doing my reducing. So we can see here I've got an x plus 5 in the bottom, here and here. Don't get tempted into reducing these solitary x's. They're both in the bottom, so they're just going to multiply each other, not reduce away. But the other thing I do see is something that we've seen previously, which is I have a 2 minus x on the bottom here and an x minus 2 on the top. So these are reverses of each other. So what I could do is I could factor out a negative 1 from this piece here. So I'm going to recopy what I have. I have x minus 2 over x times, in the numerator, I still have x minus 5. But now in this denominator, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. So I'm going to have negative 1 times x times, and now that subtraction is going to reverse into x minus 2. And so now I have a little bit more uh, reducing that we can do. So I've got this x minus 2 on the top and bottom. And so now I've reduced everything that I possibly can. So in the numerator, I have x minus 5. And then in the denominator, I've got x times negative 1 times x, which is going to multiply to make, whoops, negative x squared. 
Our last example looks like it's different than the rest, but it's really just another division of fractions question. It's just that we have a fraction in the first one, but then the second one is just written as a polynomial, but we can write it as a fraction by putting it over 1. And now, since it's division, we'll go ahead and change it to a multiplication question and flip the second fraction, the one that we have here. So I'm going to take this first fraction and just copy it as is. And then I'm going to multiply, change the problem to multiplication, by the reciprocal of this expression here. So now it's going to be 1 over x squared minus 18x plus 81. And so now we're ready to go ahead and factor these expressions so that we can then see if there's any reducing that we can do. So starting off on the top here, I'm going to break that up into two sets of parentheses. So I know it's going to be x as the first piece. Now I need to find two numbers that multiply to make 36, but add to make negative 5. So since it's a negative 36, I know it's going to be one of each. So going through our factor pairs that multiply to make 36, of course there's 6 times 6, that won't do it, but 9 times 4 will, because 9 times 4 will multiply to make 36, but they have a difference of 5. And then I just need to make sure that the 9 is negative and the 4 is positive. And so that's to ensure that we end up with that negative 5x. In the bottom, I still just have this x plus 2. Now for the other fraction, I've got the 1 up top, and now I've got to factor the expression down in the denominator. So again, I'm going to set it up as two sets of parentheses with x as the first piece. This time we're multiplying to make a positive, but adding to make a negative, so I definitely need two negatives. And now thinking about the numbers that multiply to make 81, 9 times 9 is going to do it for us, since 9 plus 9 will give us the 18 that we need. So now that we have the problem fully factored, we're ready to see what, if any, reducing we can do. And so we can see that there's an x minus 9 in both the top and the bottom. So that takes care of one of the x minus 9s. The other one is still here. And then beyond that, that's all that we can do. And so for our final result in the numerator, we just have x plus 4. In the denominator, we've got the two pieces, the x plus 2 and the x minus 9. And you can foil out that denominator, but that's extra work that's not necessary. So leaving our answer like this is an acceptable result.